Give it up to Charmella, please. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you. Um, this could be my biggest fuck up, so it's aptly themed. Um, before I start, I just want to, uh, to see by a show of hand, um, is it fair to say that all of us have been given good advice which we haven't taken and it's bit us in the back later on? So I'm in very good company. So um, I, I do martial arts. Um, I've been doing martial arts for a very long time, um, 15 years, and I'm also an assistant instructor. So, um, you know, when you're doing martial arts, you, you learn loads of amazing things. And one of the things that I learned, which I'm going to share with you, is um, different ways that you can be attacked. So if you are a man, you're more likely to be attacked from the front. And if you are a woman, you're more likely to be attacked from behind. So I know this, um, and in fact, I've even taught this, but sometimes knowing it and being aware of it are just two different things. So I'd like to take you back to um, 2004. Um, I was a student and I went to a house party. Um, it was in Shepherd's Bush, just off Goldhawk Road, um, having an amazing time dancing, singing. And then at three o'clock in the morning, uh, three or four o'clock, I decided, okay, I've had enough, I'm gonna go home. And it's a bit of a silly time to leave if you don't have a cab, because at that point the trains didn't run at night. So my friend and I, we walked down, we, we stood at the bus stop, waiting for our night bus home. Um, I had my handbag, uh, I'm standing there. And as I was standing there, I just, you know, like I could hear this real sharp, weird intake of breath, this real weird breathing, like. And I'm sort of standing, I could hear it behind me. And I, I just think this doesn't seem right. Maybe, maybe I should, I should move. And as I'm standing there thinking, I could just see my, Bag and I'm like running and running, I'm holding onto my bag, and then I, I had to let go because I just couldn't keep up with him. And I just, this red mist descended over me because I was thinking, How dare you? That is my property, and I don't want you to have it. So I carried on running after him, which was a daft thing to do because when I turned the corner, he was just miles down the road. And, um, and what really shocked me even more was I saw him get into this white car and it drove off. And that's when it hit me that I was a target. So clearly they had driven around, saw me and thought, hey, we could take her, her stuff. Um, so, you know, okay, I was a student. There wasn't much in there. Probably the bag was the most expensive thing and it wasn't that expensive. Um, and I had the hassle of replacing my keys, my phone and, you know, my credit cards um, later on. And on that night itself, I, was, I got home safe. I was driven home by the police. But it just made me think, you know, I'm aware of all of these things and I preached about it, but why didn't I take my own advice and my own knowledge at that time? So today, I'd just like to leave you with something. You know, you know what's your thing? Where is it, whether it's in your business, in your love life or with your family, you know that you should be handling that thing, and if you don't handle it, it'll come out to take you. But thank you. One second. Uh -huh. Did anybody notice my fuck up? Yes, you yeah. did let them tell the, the judging person. Yeah, I noticed that. So, would you like to, yeah. as, no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, as, as, as you get, we're ahead of schedule, as you, as you give your feedback, could you just tell us um, what qualifies you to be a judge and what you're looking sure, for? Sure, Just in that first one. Thank you very much. Uh, can I start? Right, so I've been, I've been coaching for five and a half years now, and, and you know, as most of you know, the job of a coach is to assess people's performance all the time and all sorts of levels, right? So um, that, in addition to the fact that I've been speaking at 200 events, I run myself and 50 around 50 events I was invited to, give me a good understanding of not only what um, a good public speaking performance can be, but as well, how does the public speaker feel when it's actually on the stage? You know? So I think you, know, you, you need both, especially the experience to be in a position to 
to, to be um, you know, realistic with your feedback as well. So um, I, w I was actually struggling and to the, to the very end, uh, I was struggling to, to, to see something I could pick on, right? Because it was all good, I thought, oh my God, you know, it's, the, it's the very last thing that people expect from me to just say, oh, she's great at this, she's great at that. <laughs> So you, you gave me something very little at the end, so I want to I wanna say that at the end. So uh, the, the, three, the three positives that I very quickly identified, and it was very easy to identify them, was that you're very relaxed. So I was talking earlier about how you can feel stressed and nervous on the inside, and you can look very relaxed on the outside. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I can only imagine that you were not as relaxed perhaps as you looked, but you look mm. very relaxed. You look like you just rocked up and said, hey, let me tell you a story, right? So you look very relaxed. And, and here's the thing, unless you are relaxed, or you look relaxed at least, it's gonna be very hard for the audience to relax when they watch you, or when they listen to you speak, right? And if they're not relaxed, they're not gonna enjoy it because if you feel awkward and you show that awkwardness, that, that's, mm. that feeling of awkwardness, or awkwardness or, or, or some sort of you know, insecurity, it's gonna be very hard for the audience to relax and really enjoy the speech. So I was sitting here having, having a great time listening to your story, and despite, that, despite the fact that I just saw the, you know, this side of your face most of the time, so I can imagine it was even more enjoyable for, uh, for people in front of you. So you're very relaxed, number one. There was a good use of body language, especially hands. Um, I'm someone who uses hands a lot when I speak, and you know when you think about um, expressing yourself and having your audience engaged, imagine speaking for, especially when you go like 10, 15, 20, half an hour, imagine speaking to someone for 20 minutes without using your hands, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, no matter how interesting your message is, if you don't use your hands, it, it won't be the same effect as when you use your hands the way you are using your hands. You are very comfortable using your hands. Um, and you know, and, and the, the overall use of body language was very good in my opinion. Um, you were, you were not static, you were moving around. Yes, there's, there's, there's a particular um, school of thought uh, in public speaking that we shouldn't, we shouldn't walk, we should just stand in one point, like it's like an X and you just stand on the X. This is not a fucking audition for X factor, we can walk. <laughs> yeah? And also, uh, you know, I know that partially I walk because I, I'm, I'm a dynamic person, but partially because that's a great way to manage that nervous energy. So if you know if you feel nervous, uh, you know you can show it on your face. You can do it with your hands. But if you if you walk, you can do it in a way that you're gonna release that nervous <coughs> energy without people even noticing that there's nervous energy to begin with, right? So, oh shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said we're ahead of the schedule. <laughs> we right were ahead you? of the schedule. <laughs> 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 I'm, not, I'm not done. Yet. I'm, not, I'm not done. Yet. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> so. Uh, the, the, the third thing I really like was that you are a natural storyteller, right? So, as public speakers who tell stories, I don't think I'm a, as good of a natural storyteller as you are. So, again, that makes listening to you very easy, you know? I feel like ordering a pint and just listening to you whole evening. And on the slice, you know, it's hardly negative. There's two things, actually. I just thought about one that I didn't write down. It's, it's, I know you know each other, and were, were you training her? Like the time has. So it's, it's natural that we look at people, especially people that we know, but I felt like you were looking at Elliot unconsciously a little bit too much. Right? <laughs> and this is not like, oh, she wasn't looking at me. Why the fuck she wasn't looking at me? It's just it's like you were, sure I know him, you were yeah. unconsciously, I think, you were unconsciously looking for his approval, which then yeah. takes away from <laughs> such a tiny thing. And then, and then the very last thing at the very end, and you know, the ends are the worst for me. It's like, you can be like, yeah, I'm in the floor, but how do you end it? How do you nicely say, I'm done, thank you very mm -hmm. much, and sit down? So the, I found the end, out of the whole five minutes, the, the very end slightly wobbly. Okay. Just that's a tiny, tiny little bit of a problem, and then that will become easier with experience. And you know, if you're anything like me, it will always be, <laughs> this alone. <laughs> you will always struggle a little bit because it's just hard. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, so first, moral of the story is don't go out in Shepherd's Bush, right? <laughs> Keep that on. It's not a good place to go. Out not anymore. Two thousand and four. It's okay. Come, come. Makes us scared. Okay, so 
Was she charming, graceful, beautiful? Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And just building on what Mike was saying, you've come a long way. So I get to train Shamila. I get to see her in the training room. And what you've come a long way is you've kind of taken the handbrake down a bit mm -hmm. and you've actually started to present from the inside out, mm -hmm. right? So you're not kind of, you know, you can see people are kind of external with their presentations and they're not present in their body. Do you know what I mean? Has anyone seen speakers like that? And they're quite robotic and it's kind of out here energetically and it's not in here, but you're very in here. Mm -hmm. uh, so well done. So that's a, that's a really good way. Always look for edit approval, members. Good thing to do, <laughs> right? So good, that's really nice to see because that relaxed the audience. They could really engage with you and go on that journey with you. What I do want to see as your stretch is to dial up the emotion. Who's had their bag snatched or been mugged or robbed? The emotion is intense, right? It's a proper like, oh my fucking, what the fuck? Just, right? It's, and I wanted to see you go there. Because mm -hmm. knowing you, I've trained with, uh, with um, Shamila here in the Shaolin last year, went to China together and we're like, ah, oh. she's a <laughs> Right? She is seriously hard. So I can only imagine what you would have felt like that moment. Yeah. And I wanted to see that, mm -hmm. right? But it's very controlled, very measured. So that's your next level. Mm -hmm. Take the handbrake off emotionally mm -hmm. and let yourself go. Great. Otherwise, great stuff. Thank you. Great. 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 Great.